The last time I did a Hyundai Tucson video review was back in 2017. There I am, two years ago. And here's some of the feedback you gave me. Your music is too loud. If you wanted someone to play with your hose, you just had to ask. Washing your car, loan or not, with a sponge you keep throwing on the ground is a quick way to scratch your paintwork. Stop it! I hope he doesn't wash his own car like that. He cleaned the car, but he still have water spots on the windows. Don't you ever post a video about a car again. Oh, I don't make enough money from these YouTube reviews. Just film me while I clean it and we'll call it a car review. <laughs> I hope Terry finds a good home with someone that'll wash him properly. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Well, look, a lot's changed in two years. I mean, just look at us. We're completely different looking now. Actually, we're not. We're almost identical. All that's really different about us is, is my face. I've got a beard now. And the same with the new Tucson. All that's really different about it is its face. This is the 2020 Hyundai Tucson in the Highlander grade. That's the top spec grade. That last review we did was on the base spec grade and it was a long-term review. This, this is a short-term review. So what I'm gonna do is just tell you the things that I really like about it and the things I don't really like about it. Ready? Let's go. Oh, you scared me. Look, if you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au. You'll see how I get that score at the end. I, I break it down all into price and driving and safety and all of that stuff. Oh, and hit like and subscribe. I did. First, the looks. I like them, tough and pretty at the same time. I like that bonnet, that tailgate, and that side profile. The Tucson's looks haven't really changed since it was updated in 2018. That saw the taillights get a restyle and brought that new face with the cascading grille and redesigned headlights. Sure, it hasn't changed its looks much since it was introduced to Australia in 2015, but the Tucson has aged pretty well. Now the interior. The Tucson's insides haven't really changed either since it was updated in 2018. This is the top of the range Highlander. It has a list price of $46,500 and it still feels a little bit plain and plasticky in here. The cabins in the top spec Mazda CX-5 and RAV4 definitely feel more special than this. Coming standard on the Highlander are leather seats, there's an 8 inch screen with sat-nav, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, there's an 8 speaker Infinity sound system with digital radio, proximity unlocking, tinted rear glass and dual zone climate control. I like those features, but get this, you get all of them on the grade below. Now by stepping up to the Highlander you also get power adjustable, heated and ventilated front seats, front parking sensors, wireless charging for your phone, a heated steering wheel, that giant sunroof, LED headlights and tail lights, 19 inch alloy wheels and the twin exhaust. Alright, shall we go for a drive? Let's do it. Now the Highlander comes with a choice of petrol or diesel engines. This one, our test car, is the petrol. It's a 1.6 litre turbo petrol and it's not bad. Transmission is a seven speed dual clutch and if you've never driven a dual clutch before then you'll you'll get very used to this when you take off kind of lurches a little bit that's just a dual clutch thing you'll get used to it i promise you i promise you it's not a bad thing now that engine on takeoff just like we did then it's quite quick it moves away quite quickly but if you put your foot down and you're already traveling along say at 60 put your foot down it, it kind of feels like it runs out of puff it feels like it needs a bit more grunt. Um, it's not a deal breaker at all. Uh, it's just something you will become well aware of. Now in terms of what it's like to drive, the driving position isn't that great. I can't get my seat to go any lower than this. So if you're one of those people that likes to sit up really high, you're gonna love the Tucson Highlander. The seats are also quite firm. Now they're brand new. Um, so obviously the foam hasn't had a chance to sort of you know, get worn in a bit, uh, but at the moment they do feel like wood. Uh, they're a little bit too firm. Um, I hope over time that does get a little bit softer. Now, in terms of visibility, I am having uh, a few issues with this A-pillar here. The A-pillars are 
the pillars either side of the windscreen and they're quite thick so there have been times where I've been going around roundabouts or around corners and I've had to look around those pillars and same with the visibility out the back too it's not terrific that back window is quite small it's quite narrow and those little portholes which are like in those rear quarter uh, windows they're really small um, and so when you reverse parking yeah you got a bit of a blind spot back there too but that reversing camera um, is really good so what's it like to drive in comparison to its rivals like the Mazda 6, 5 and the, and the RAV4 it's good there aren't a lot of complaints about the way it drives but I've got to say the new RAV4 is more comfortable and um, the new CX-5 is more enjoyable to drive. It feels more engaging to drive. Still, the Tucson is, is not bad, not bad at all to steer. Okay, now the big news for this latest update, for this 2020 Hyundai Tucson is safety features. You know, really the lower grades have benefited most from this upgrade in safety features, but the Highlander is still the best kitted out. You've got AEB which works at high speeds with pedestrian detection, you've got blind spot warning, you've got lane keeping assistance, you've got rear cross traffic alert and you've also got adaptive cruise control. Alright now I want to talk to you about practicality so to do that I'm going to pull over and I'm going to show you what the rear leg room's like. Okay rear leg room, I like it. This sits in my driving position, I'm 191 centimeters tall and Look how much space I've got. That's really, really good. And that's partly helped because of the shape of the back of these seats too. They're sort of like scooped out so your legs fit in. Headroom is also really good back here, even though there's a sunroof. And I like that. It's like a tread plate. It's made getting in and out for my five-year-old son a lot easier. Uh, a lot of SUVs don't have those. They've just got the metal and it can get quite slippery. Um, and these doors as well, they're tall, they're wide. They could open a bit wider. The Mazda CX-5s open really wide, almost at a right angle to the car. Um, yeah, these could go a bit wider. Let me show you the boot. Now the Highlander grade comes with an auto tailgate and it is so slow. Seriously, I'd much prefer a manual one a lot quicker. Under here, you've got a full-size alloy wheel and this is actually a pretty big boot, 488 litres. That's bigger than the Mazda CX-5s and we've managed to fit in the Cars Guide Pram and Kim Kardashian's luggage. All right, let's go home for a wrap up. The new generation Tucson is quite a way off. We're talking probably gonna be years. In the meantime, we've got this. It's the, the 2020 Tucson in the Highlander grade. Look, yeah, look, the interior is a bit dull. It's quite pricey at 46 and a half grand. And it doesn't drive as well as some of its new arrivals. But I reckon it looks great. It's got good safety tech and excellent features. You missed a bit. <laughs>